Let's talk about the strongest and weakest of the Golden Guardians in Warhammer 40k with a tier list of units from Codex Adeptus Custodes. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Custodes once more, and in this video I thought we'd do a tier list of units from their Codex. Now we've got four points confirmed for the army, we can have a bit more certainty as to what is looking good or bad right now. In this video I thought it would be interesting to take a look at which are looking like the best and worst Oromite clad guardians, and maybe more likely to appear in competitive lists going forward until any next balanced data slate. I'm sure it doesn't really need to be said too much at this point, but Codex Adeptus Custodes is definitely a codex with issues. I made a video talking about the rules issues with Codex Adeptus Custodes that seemed to blow up to over 100k views, so I feel like that's resonating with quite a lot of the player base right now. I think it's maybe not too hard to argue that each section of the codex got worse, Marshal Qatar got toned down, none of the detachments are as powerful as the index one, neither in stratagems nor core rules, data sheets received far more nerfs than they had buffs, and durability is just looking like an issue in general, while custodies don't have any defence against devastating wounds, which is going to make that high armour save and toughness go down just depressingly easily against certain armies. I have a feeling that as a result, the custodies are probably going to be pretty weak going forward for a while in 40k, though as they've done several times already, I'm sure they'll get some sort of adjustment in a balanced data slate if so. Some sort of protection against devastating wounds just baked into the faction probably sounds like a smart idea. Maybe other rules or points changes as necessary if they really are underpowered. Putting all that to one side for a bit though, let's talk about what's looking strongest and weakest for the army. And for this one I've broken down the units into 5 rough tiers that I'd rate their power level at, mainly focusing on core datasheet strength, and perhaps slightly presuming that you're playing either Shield Host or the Talons of the Emperor, as at least for more competitive style 2000 point games, they may be looking like the only strong options. The other ones do have a few cool tricks, but I just don't think it's really much compared with actual stratagems and detachment rules that support the core of your army. Locking all supports to either the Sisters of Silence or the characters just probably isn't enough at this point. In any case though, with that in mind, I'll talk through the data sheets in order of power as I'd perceive them right now, what's good or bad about them, and what issues they have, and maybe how I'd think about using them in strong lists. Obviously tier lists are a little bit arbitrary in Warhammer 40k, some things might be in grey areas between tiers and things, feel free to let me know if you think anything was either under or overrated. In any case though, let's jump into the units and start out with tier 5, these are perhaps some of the ones that are considered the very most overshadowed. Starting out, we've got the Agamator's Custodian Jet Bikes, 240 points for basically Virtus Praetors, but unfortunately a bit worse. Their stat line's pretty much the same, with the same sort of melee attacks, I feel like their shooting is pretty much a side grade versus your choice of Hurricane Bolters or Salvo Launchers, they can customise their guns a little bit more, and they cost 5 points more versus a unit that's generally considered kind of overcosted. I feel like perhaps the biggest draw to them is to take a big 6 model unit, if you wanted to try and make some sort of Biker Death Star type unit work for like 500 points plus a shield captain. Overall just not really dangerous or durable enough for their cost unfortunately, even if they move quite fast. The other one I've chosen to rank down here is the Orion Dropship, 690 points for a massive investment flyer. It's just far too expensive for its abilities really. If you're going to be spending around about 700 points on a model then it needs to basically be taking out good chunks of the enemy army every turn, and likely so good a defensive profile that it's just not going to get taken down even with focused fire. This thing is a long way from that though I think, 8 last cannon style shots plus some spammed anti-infantry shooting, it can transport some models but it only has a defensive profile a little better than a land raider, that's just ridiculously behind the curve for a 700 point unit. Moving on to tier 4, these are the units are considered kind of overshadowed right now, and here there does seem to be really quite a lot of Forge World, GW seems to have deliberately kept the Codex units better than these guys, perhaps one of the ones that I was most tempted to put up in tier 3 were the Sagittarium Custodians, which I think really aren't awful for the cost, 225 points per 5 of them, they get heavy bolter style shooting attacks with a couple of bonus special rules, once per game devastating wounds and suppressing enemies, they do get golden armoured wounds on the table for kind of cheap, can contribute a little bit more fiercely to the game from range unlike custodians with guardian spears and things, and while their melee isn't exactly standout, they do have enough misericordia attacks to fairly comfortably bully most normal sized enemy infantry units, anything toughness for or less would have to be seriously concerned about being charged by a squad of these, 
Now they've got actual access to some good shooting stratagems like that Talons Interlocked one for Strength 6 and AP2 Heavy Bolters. Maybe there's a little bit more interest to them. I might have been a little bit harsh here. Could probably have ranked them up in Tier 3. I feel like for the vast majority of people, they'll be sticking with the chaps with Guardian Spears. Next up, we've got the Custodian Guard with the Adrocite and Pyrothite Spears. They're 300 points for 5, so 75 points more than either your regular Custodians or your Sagittarum. I feel like these guys are basically paying 75 points extra for a side grade over the standard Custodians datasheet. The shooting attack might be a little bit better, but not by much. I'm not convinced that the lethal hit style thing is better than the double shoot. They're just nowhere near worth an extra 75 points over a regular squad of Custodian Guard, which are also a bit more flexible with other war gear options. Next up, unfortunately, the Cool Forge World Dreadnoughts are down here. Kind of a shame to see these guys pretty underpowered, given that they're really quite cool models, I think, and were real powerhouses in the last edition. The Telemon Heavy Dreadnought is really quite tanky. Toughness 10, 12 wounds, a 2 plus save and a 4 plus invulnerable, with minus 1 damage built in. This thing's genuinely quite hard to take down, even with dedicated anti-tank firepower. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have the damage output to match. I think it'd be a bad idea to pass up the Telemon Sestus, which still has a shooting attack built into it. And then after that, you're probably taking one of the AP-1 gun variants it has, which just isn't really all that exciting as a primary weapon for a big heavy walker like this. At the right points cost, this guy could be interesting, but 235 is far above that. Next up, we've got the Codex Contempt to Dreadnought. This one got a 15 point decrease in the Codex points, down to 170 points, but it was spectacularly overcosted before. It gets the similar sort of Dreadnought melee attack, sitting on a 2, then either an Assault Cannon or a Multi Melter, so kind of notably bad damage output for this kind of points cost. It's only real good bit of value is that Resurrect on Death it gets on a 2 plus the first time it dies means that potentially it could be slain in melee and then come back swinging next turn. Could at least be theoretically kind of nasty if it does some damage the first time, and then gets up again to do a bunch more exactly where your opponent doesn't want it. Generally though, only getting value out of that when it actually dies is a bit questionable, and you're probably just best off going for something that's just more dangerous or durable in the first place. I feel like this guy could have been borderline tier 5, I was a bit generous to him as he went down a bit in points. Next up, we've got the Contemptor Achilles for 5 points less than the regular Contemptor. He does have at least relatively scary melee with that massive Guardian Spear of his, a Lance attack on the regular Dreadnought profile but with D6 plus 1 damage, so extra nasty against really big tanks and vehicles. He also gets a few more bonus Mortal Wounds, has the Martial Katar boost, and then can maybe have some Twin Incinerators or Drathid Destructors, plus that Dread Spear shot. Otherwise though, his durability is just a bit so-so at toughness 9, 10 wounds and a 2 plus save for that points cost. Not awful, but kind of vulnerable to things like melter shots. For a dedicated melee dreadnought, he's also very slow at only 6 inch movement, which might mean that he's only getting into the units the enemy allows him to. I think he's not enormously far off being alright, but again it's just overcosted for his overall abilities. Nothing too different for the Contempt of Galatas, I think. This one's 10 points more and is a bit tankier. He goes up to a 4 plus invulnerable save if he's caught out of cover by high AP stuff. Has a minus 1 to wound in melee, which is genuinely kind of good there. Has less shooting, but gets a side grade on the melee. 8 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 3 out of that warblade is really quite punchy against elite infantry. Again though, he's very pricey and slow moving at 6 inch move. Might be more of a distraction unit compared with anything else. And he also does cost a bit more than the other Contemptor variants. I feel like he might be maybe a little bit better than the other two, though perhaps the best of a bad bunch. Next up, we've got the Knight Centura. 70 points for a Sisters of Silence leader that gives you plus 2 to move, advance, and charge. 3 attacks with that Executioner Great Blade, and gives the enemy problems with falling back if you should happen to lock up an enemy unit with Sisters of Silence, and they don't just kill you in return. Really, I'm just not sure exactly what her intended role is supposed to be. Maybe go alongside Vigilators, engage something, and then make the enemy have to test Desperate Escape, or stay in combat with them, or more likely maybe just get countercharged. It just really doesn't seem like there's much here that's worth 70 points. Feels like the only real reason that I want to take her along would be if you wanted to take certain enhancements in that Null Maiden Task Force. And unfortunately, that's just not really considered a detachment that's really much used beyond fun and fluff purposes. Next up, the Coronas Grav Carrier is almost like the Custodius version of a Rhino, only a very little bit of small anti-infantry fire and really quite a big transport capacity of 8 models. 
This certainly makes Custodes Rhinos tougher and more expensive though. It's toughness 12, 16 wounds and a 2 plus save, so essentially sort of land raider levels of durability there, though it does pay for them massively at 200 points. It's got quite a nice boost to disembarking units, allowing them to re-roll wound rolls if they target something that it attacks. I feel like people are probably going to rarely look at this when the land raider exists, unfortunately. The damage boost thing is kind of nice, but for just 40 points you could get 4 ballistic skill 2 plus lad cannons added on, which is probably worth it in itself. Never mind the fact that the land raider can move, drop and charge with the assault ramp. I think that between those two the land raider is well worth the extra 40 points investment. Even with that though, more people tend to go custodies on foot or blade champions more so than either. The other big golden flyer is the Ares gunship, so still ridiculously costly, but at least it does have some guns that might justify that kind of cost. 8 ballistic skill 2 plus last cannon equivalents, and then even bigger and scarier guns with 3 attacks at strength 18, AP 4, and a huge damage D6 plus 6. A pretty reasonable chance to deal some massive damage to multiple different enemy targets in one turn there. It also gets a weakish bombing attack with some Infernus firebombs that might just make more sense to try and play KG and keep safe from enemy fire if possible. I think it's solidly better than the Orion, but maybe not to the point where it's actually really that good. 580 points needs to absolutely carry an army list if you're including something that big, and I feel like this thing could be really quite wasted against certain armies where you don't have enough big heavy targets for it to take out. It's also hard to hide as well. And some armies might kill it just a bit depressingly quickly if they've got really good quality long range anti tank. Finally, for this tier, we've got the Palace Grav Attack, 120 points for the fast moving Custodes Scout Vehicle. This one gets 8 shots at strength 5, damage 1, with twin linked and devastating wounds. It is quite fast, though unfortunately, it's just neither good on damage nor good on defense. And it's also not really cheap enough. And it's also just not really cheap enough for its fast skirmisher type role. If it was cheap and expendable, it might have a bit more draw for that. Moving up to tier 3, these are the units that are considered maybe a bit more usable, but kind of niche and unlikely to get played compared with other options, at least in more optimised armies. First up, we've got the Venerable Land Raider. As mentioned, it's 240 points for a big tough vehicle with ballistic skill 2 plus las cannons, and he gets to move up the board, drop the custodies out the front with the assault ramp, and then deliver them into combat fairly reliably. It is fairly tough and should be able to get cover saves really quite easily, and might divert some hard hitting anti tank shots from the rest of the golden armour on the board. Though, unlike Space Marine versions, it doesn't have any access to armour of contempt, maybe making it just a little bit easier to take out than the Space Marine Land Raider. Overall, I genuinely think it's not awful, maybe a tiny bit underrated, but most people tend to go for more golden bodies on the board more so than a Land Raider to get them there. I might also be a bit more tempted by a blade champion to deliver custodies to melee at slightly longer range. The advance and charge that he can get is quite nice, and with average rolling that only gets you a little bit less far than a land raider, and doesn't care about going through terrain as their infantry. Next up we've got the Virtus Praetors, 75 points each for the Golden Eagle jet bikes, and you can have 2 or 3 in a unit. I've also chosen to rank the Dawn Eagle jet bike captain here kind of tied with them for how much use he is with their stratagems, and he does have that rather nice fall back at the end of the fight phase, which could be really quite big for lining up another charge on something that your opponent really wanted to keep safe. These guys have felt kind of overcosted since the start of the edition though, since then they've had multiple points cuts which have helped a little bit, but still to the point where they're just kind of less bad than they were, but not quite catching up with the custodies infantry, much of which also went down in cost as well. They do move fast, so they can get up the board a fair bit quicker. They have Lance on the charge for plus one to wound with the Guardian Spear type profiles, which definitely makes them scarier, plus a little bit of shooting, though not that much. Compared with the rest of the Custodians, they're not really all that tough for the cost, even if they do individually have quite chunky profiles. And the special rules maybe aren't the best thought out ones. The auto advance six inches, I guess, is handy enough to jump from cover to cover, maybe. The mortal wound swoop attack type thing it seems fun on paper, but it almost always works out in practice as far less good than actually just doing the damage output with the jet bikes, doing a shooting attack and a charge rather than just a couple of mortal wounds. I still say they're maybe not quite as far behind as people might think. They can get golden armor and guardian spears up the board far faster than the rest of the choices out here, and that is worth a premium compared with the rest of the custodians, but just not as much as what they're paying really. Next up, for some Sisters of Silence, we've got the Vigilators, 50 points for 4 of them, up to a big 125 for 10. 
They're pretty fragile for that points cost and hit with a whole bunch of strength 5 and damage 2 attacks with devastating wounds. Those devastating wounds going off a little bit more reliably against psychers. They're only anti psycher 5 plus now, not 4 plus. I guess they're kind of a critical unit to the Talons of the Emperor Detachment as the only real unit that can handle anything tougher than lightish infantry. I feel like they perhaps could be most interesting though in Talons of the Emperor, when in theory you could use the Custodius Stratagem to stop them being shot, and maybe have a layer in the unit to fight first if the enemy chooses to charge them. Between those two it feels like they could at least be somewhat problematic, even if it does feel like quite a lot of points and setup. I think one of their other main issues is their melee just offers you a lot of what you already have already in AP-2 and damage to power weapon type attacks. You generally will have loads of that in Guardian Spears. And getting more attacks like that on a far more fragile unit maybe just doesn't seem like the most tempting thing in the world. I feel like you can probably make them all right if you really try and build around them, though I feel like most people won't choose to. As mentioned, Alea's 80 points and she gives the Vigilators fights first. Definitely handy enough to have and could make them really quite problematic to charge with certain enemy units out there. See if they can take 20 Great Blade attacks plus Alea's own damage, which isn't too bad in itself at strength 6 and damage 3. She also gives her unit a damage buff if they start to take casualties as well, which isn't nothing. Overall does feel kind of dependent on Vigilators being overall worth it though for whether or not she's going to be good. I feel like she's not too bad in her own right though. Fights first a bit of quality melee and a situational damage buff seem like not the most awful in combo. The Null Maiden Rhino 75 points and is absolutely fine for what it does. If you want to deliver damage deal assisters to the midfield then this seems like it could be the unit to do so. Maybe a big squad of 10 Witch Seekers getting out and burning the foe with the plus 1 strength and AP strats. Or acting as a battlefield bunker for Vigilators maybe with a lair to jump out and get the charge on the enemy rather than the other way around. With the Witch Seekers I guess you could scout it up the board to get it there. It could be a somewhat durable unit to give the nearby Custodes the protection that the Talons of the Emperor Detachment give. Maybe not the worst to have that on a big tough unit that's out in the open. And after it's done its transport type things, it can just be a bit of a placeholder screening or nuisance charge type unit, just generally getting in the way however's best and hopefully stealing some damage that might be aimed at the custodies. Kind of fun for what it does overall, it just needs sisters to be able to work as the primary damage dealers. Seems like it's got more value in Talons of the Emperor to hand out the protection against mortal wounds. Finally for this tier I thought I'd mention the Aquilon Custodians. These guys are 210 points per 3 of them, slightly more than the 195 for the 3 Alaris Custodians. And I feel like, like the rest of the Forge World Custodians, their equivalent plastic kit is just them but better really. Again I feel like they're maybe not enormously crazily far behind. They do get the teleport move, they get strength aid on those gauntlets, and they do get some fun shooting attacks plus a shooting boosting rule. But overall it just feels like the Alaris Custodians have them beat, they're a little bit cheaper. They get a very nice rule boosting them against things like monsters and vehicles. I'd argue that their shooting is probably better as well. Might have been a bit generous giving them tier 3 here. I could have happily put them in tier 4 as well. Next up and moving on to the units I've chosen to rank in tier 2. I feel like these guys maybe have some interest to them. Though I still feel like the ones in tier 1 are probably going to get played a lot more reliably. The Venatari Jump Pack Custodians are 200 points per 3. So 66 points for faster moving custodian model with fly. They do pay a big 20 point tax on the custodian guard they're kind of similar to profile wise. But I feel like they pay that tax for the rapid ingress that they get built in free. You can basically near enough guarantee a charge with these guys out of reserve. Drop them behind a ruin or something to stop them from being shot by enemy guns. Somewhere that's within say 15 inches or so of an enemy model that you want to charge and want to get the first alpha strike on. And then next turn in your turn you should have a pretty much guaranteed charge on that if you budget a command point reroll. So one reliable way to get some golden armour into melee before it takes damage. They've got a little bit of shooting attack as well. They can fall back and charge if they're needed to. And then from there they're basically sort of custodian guard that move a bit faster if admittedly paying attacks for their delivery. Overall I still rate them as kind of niche but I think they do have their selling points. Might be one to play in small numbers if you do. Next up we've got the shield captains. I already mentioned the Dawn Eagle one, which I think is kind of tied to the jet bikes. Here I mentioned the Shield Captain and the Terminator one. I feel like these guys have really caught the rough end of the battle tactic changes. They do have a fair few interesting options in the Talons of the Emperor, though Shield Host really doesn't help them that much at all. 
They can only get the 4 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds in that one. And that is kind of awkward given that you might want a shield captain for the Castellan's mark and makes that enhancement harder to access. They do have a few more options in the Talents Detachment, the Reactive Move, the Shooting Buff, Mortal Wound Defense, and the plus one to wound against a damaged unit, all of which could be really quite nice. Maybe not quite as powerful as the minus one damage thing they could do in the Index Shield host though. They are also really quite costly characters at 140 points, a threat isn't quite as good as the Blade Champion at 410, so I feel like the free stratagems do need to carry their weight. I guess the Terminator one's interesting enough if you want to put an enhancement in a chunky Terminator squad, though I feel like the majority of people tend to build around Guard or Wardens for the main battle line. For the on-foot one, I'd probably be tempted to go with the Pyrethite Spear and the Shield as the loadout for him. Getting the extra wound as well as the Guardian Spear profile seems like a win overall. Then for the next two, we've got the Custodia Special Characters, Valyrian and Trajan Valoris, both of which I'd rate either towards the bottom of Tier 2 or High Tier 3. Valyrian did get a small points cut, going down to 110 points. His main draw is getting a sort of free Armor of Contempt type rule for his unit, worsening the AP of enemy attacks by minus 1, which is admittedly one way to make Custodias a bit more tanky, and doubly so if you get cover. Beyond that, his melee is a bit better than normal shield captains, and he does cost a bit less for it. His strength is an AP3 on that Guardian Spear, and he gets a once per battle flipper dice to a 6 special rule, which adds a tiny bit of value I suppose. It was a bit sad that he lost his reroll ability, which genuinely wasn't a bad perk of the datasheet. And again, I feel like he's probably not going to be desired versus Blade Champions as a first pick. Though currently given Custodians really do have durability problems, it might not be the worst for making one squad unusually tanky. If you just want a bigger movable brick of Custodians, Wardens in cover, popping their feel no pain type thing with this permanent Armour of Contempt type upgrade, just feels like a block of golden armour that you're not going to shift unless you bring to bear the entire weight of an enemy army's firepower on it. Otherwise, we've got Trajan Valoris, who certainly took a massive great big nerf this time round. The High Lord of Terror himself is now mainly good just as a big hammer of damage. Six attacks at strength 10, AP 2 and damage 3 with the Watcher's Axe, going up to a massive 12 attacks at that once per battle. I feel like that big flurry of damage really does need to carry his weight in value now, as his buffing rules just went way down. Ignoring hit roll modifiers isn't terrible, though it's not the biggest deal in the world when he hits on a 2+, plus anyway. And losing the fight's first threat from the moment Shackle, I did think, was one of its best abilities alongside the big damage. And it just overall makes him far less interesting as a leader unit. It's not really adding much besides a spear that hits good. I still don't think he's terrible with a squad of wardens. He can still basically do the thing where he's handling a lot of the tougher stuff where they handle the defense and it does make for a scary unit. Again though I feel like people might be more tempted to go with blade champions for the good melee advance and charge and also just being far cheaper. 150 points I think is a lot for just a beat stick type character. Again, I'd probably go bottom of tier 2 or higher tier 3. Finally, just as a common allied choice, I thought I'd mention the Calidus Assassin. Obviously not a custodian, but probably worth mentioning, just given that they can struggle with having cheap fast units to do secondary objectives. So having a lone operative with big hair who can jump on and off the board, investigating signals and deploying teleport homers and things seems like a pretty big positive. Getting the 10 point nerf in the last points updates didn't really help her too much. But I still think she's kind of usable. Definitely helps out with the secondary scoring game, while hopefully the Golden Guardians themselves focus on the primary. She does also have that ruin a battle tactic stratagem thing for the enemy, and a little bit of damage threat on her own that might be able to threaten a character. Maybe the Eversaw Assassin could be another interesting one, just for a fast moving lone operative with Scout. It could be a bit more of a skirmishing on the midfield type role. Moving on though, let's talk about the stuff that had ranked top tier. And I'll start with what I'd probably consider the single best of the bunch in the Custodian Wardens. I feel like these guys might be the best Custodian infantry right now compared with the Custodian Guard or the Alavis Terminators, just due to them being the ones that can really take a punch in the face of the Custodians losing really quite a lot of their durability rules. Often Custodians just need to march up the board, sit in the midfield and defend those objectives against all comers and these guys do seem like they'd do that well. They're 200 points for 4 or 250 for 5. I generally want to arm them with the Guardian Spears as the better weapon profile, and they can take a Vexilla in the squad without compromising the Guardian Spear, which is a positive over the Guard. The Guardian Spears for all the standard Custodian variants are just generally threatening with Strength 7, AP 2, Damage 2, and Lethal Hits when they need it. 
and then the Wardens get the extra tankiness, minus one to wound when led by a character and shot by something that's high strength, and that single big turn of four plus feel no pain to make them maximally tanky on the turn when the enemy is going to try and take them out. I suspect that Blade Champions might be the way to go for advance and charge to get them to melee, plus also having good damage output and being fairly cheap compared with the rest. As mentioned though, I feel like Valerian, Trajan and the regular shield caption on Fort all could be okay, I feel like Blade Champions are going to get used more. Otherwise, if you like your Custodians being generally dangerous, then the Custodian Guard are a little cheaper than the Wardens and are more damage focused in their special rules. 45 points per model, their special rules are a massive reroll wound rolls if you can hold an objective while they attack, that's absolutely massive. If you could say charge onto a midfield objective and be able to use their objective control to claim that as you strike, and if they can muster a spot on the midfield, then getting that while you use their double shooting rule is really quite big. Potentially 20 Guardian Spears hitting on twos and re-rolling wounds could really thin out some enemy units that you might struggle to reach otherwise. Maybe even more so if you use things like the plus one strength and extra AP stratagem that they can get now. Loads of attacks like that at strength five, AB two, damage two and re-rolling wounds could have them perhaps surprise your opponent with a fairly scary amount of damage at range. I generally still rate the Guardian Spears over the Shields, though I have seen that some people quite like to take a Vexilla and a Shield on the same model, that way you get 4 wounds on that model and the Misericordia, and you also get the benefit to the unit of getting extra objective control with the Vexilla, so you're sort of doubling up on extra durability and objective control for the unit for that one, if you are taking the hit of losing the Spear. They can work really quite well with Kyria Dractus as well, and we'll get onto her at the end. Otherwise, to complement those two are the Alaris Custodian Terminators, 65 points per model, and you can get any number between 2 and 6 bar 4. In general, I'd want to use these as a sort of complement to the main battle line, perhaps costed at the right sort of level, where the extra abilities that they have are pretty useful, but rarely seem to be the unit that people choose to actually build around to have as your main damage punch led by a character or anything like that, often preferring them in smaller units to deep strike around with their special rule. At 130 points, they can just be a slightly lower investment unit to send to do certain jobs that you might not want to send, say a 200 point unit plus character to go at. Their shooting's quite nice for clearing a bunch of chaff, maybe with multiple grenade launchers with blasts to stack a whole load of accurate AP1 damage 1 hits. And their Guardian Spear melee gets a very nice plus 1 to wound against characters, monsters and vehicles, meaning that they're extra good at going after certain targets on the board. I do quite like that teleport shunt move that they can have. Unfortunately unable to do it turn 1 now as it means that you go back to strategic reserve but being able to redeploy them across the board in the later turns is still really quite powerful. Could be nice to have them respond to a further flung enemy threat or just use it to complete a secondary objective if they're the best choice to do so. Really nice to have that kind of one punch mobility in an otherwise slightly slow army. I feel like these probably will be continue to be used in a more supporting role as opposed to the more main punch of the army but I think they're fairly well balanced, and they do have their perks. As I mentioned really quite a lot already, I feel like the Blade Champion's probably going to be the standout strong HQ choice for the army now. Besides Valyrian, he's far cheaper than the other options, and that can be quite nice for Custodian Wardens to trigger that minus one to wound boost. Then he really is quite dangerous as well, hitting with a bunch of attacks at strength six, AP three, and damage three with Martial Qatar and all with devastating wounds as well, which can be really quite nice to have against big tough vehicles and things, just to get one or two opportunistic wounds through. I feel like that's the most valuable one, though he can swap those bolt swords to other profiles if it makes more sense. Otherwise, he can advance and charge once per game, and is able to re-roll charge rolls. That means as well as just being a fighty character that can bear enhancements, he can also be really quite good to get the custodians to combat. On average, his unit has around about an 18-inch average charge threat range, and that's really quite a big deal for otherwise slightly slow-moving custodies. You might be able to move him into a position behind a ruin, and then be able to have a massive great big threat bubble that can threaten a whole load of the board, perhaps particularly if you bodged a command point re-roll for the advance roll if necessary. Overall, even though he was toned down himself, the nerfs to most of the other characters do seem worse overall. Seems like for a custodian battle line, several units of wardens backed up by blade champions feel like just really quite general purpose, tough units with a bunch of threat and can move really quite quickly across the board when they need to. Next up, we've got the Sisters of Silence. I've chosen to rank both the Prosecutors and the Witch Seekers here. 
as I feel like they're just really quite good cheap nuisance units for their own roles. Typically I'd be most tempted by just very cheap units, so 4 prosecutors for 40 points, or 4 witch seekers for 50. In an army where all the actual custodians will cost you over 100 points, small units are just generally handy to have around, means that if your home objective is completely safe, and the opponent can't threaten it, you could hold it for a very small amount of investment, while all the golden boys go off to fight. If you need units to do actions like cleansing or investigating signal, they can do that. Can be handy enough to have, say, a 40 point unit of prosecutors in strategic reserves to threaten secondaries. They're very cheap and expendable for screening units, and they'll be useful to have about in Talons of the Emperor, protecting nearby custodians from mortal wounds and psychic attacks, even if it's not devastating wounds at the moment. Between the two of them, I think it's the choice of whether or not you just go absolute bargain basement with the prosecutors, or if you've got 10 points left to spend on something and you feel like the upgrade to Witch Seekers is worth it. That means that they actually do have some genuine infantry killing firepower with the flamers. They are just far more threatening than the bolters. And they also get scout 6 inches. So could potentially be going towards the mid-board objectives turn 1. Maybe setting up shot behind a ruin and trying not to get shot on a midfield point. In theory they could threaten overwatch as well if there's targets light enough for them to try and take out. I guess maybe the witch seekers could be interesting enough in a big squad of 10 for the stratagem for plus 1 strength and plus 1 AP. In the Talons type detachment, I feel like an average of 35 hits at strength 5 and AP 1 ignoring cover is enough to be interesting at least. It certainly obliterates some enemy chaff with that first volley and maybe have enough attacks to threaten serious overwatch if the enemy moved up. In general though, I'd rate them here for their more small nuisance role as supporting the army with the objective game, meaning that you don't have to commit to expensive units to doing more grunt work. Back to the Forge world, and the only Forge world unit I've chosen to put in the top tier was the Caladius Grav Tank. 215 points for a great big custodian gun tank. The profile really is quite fearsome against vehicles. 4 attacks at strength 12, AP 3, and a massive damage D6 plus 2. All hitting on a reliable 2 plus with twin linked, and even getting lethal hits against vehicles and monsters. Overall it just does its job really quite well. Dedicated long range anti-tank for the army. It also comes with a very small anti-infantry type gun as well. And they're fast and tough. 14 wounds with a 2 plus save will take a lot of guns to chew through in cover. I feel like one or two of these isn't really ever going to be a particularly bad choice hovering around in the midfield. If you roll hot with these things they can absolutely threaten to pop some very serious enemy tanks in a single round of shooting. Finally last but not least and adopted as an honorary custodian we've got Kyria Draxus. The Lord Inquisitor did go up 10 points, but I still think remains as actually one of the best leaders for the faction. She's allowed to join Imperium Battle Line Infantry, so that means Custodian Guard. For what she adds, on a 2+, plus, she can prevent shooting at 18 inches, so if you move them out into the open turn 1, you can be safe from longer range enemy firepower that way, unless you get unlucky. Can be quite nice for maybe a second wave unit moving up the board. And then the other main thing that she adds is just a surprising amount of shooting for just literally one model. Her unique shuriken catapult dirge singer, plus a whole bunch of indirect fire psyche attacks. Between those two, she's got 10 attacks that are genuinely quite interesting, all of which are AP 0 and damage 2, but come with either anti infantry and devastating wounds, or indirect fire and sustained hits too. Then, if the stars align and you could maybe get her and her custodian guard to tow onto a home field objective or a midfield objective and hold it, you could then activate the double shoot. Get 20 shots out of her between those two profiles and they're all fairly good quality. And then also get re-roll wound rolls as well. And that's just massive with the shuriken catapult with anti-infantry in particular. You could average around 3 or 4 slain space rings from the shuriken catapult alone. Never mind the psychic bombardment or the squad's actual shooting. Otherwise she also even chips in in melee a little bit with a power fist and a plus 1 to hit xenos for the squad if it's relevant. Not usually all that important if you're hitting her on a 2 plus but occasionally might be okay against stealth or minus 1 to hit. Overall I feel like she's just really quite good value alongside Custodian Guard. The 2 plus can't shoot me thing is all very nice, and then it's just kind of crazy just how potentially ruinous her shooting can be for one model that's got a shuriken catapult. In any case, overall I feel like Custodia's list at the moment could do worse than going with a combination of these. Maybe Custodian Wardens led by Blade Champions for a mainstay. Perhaps a big unit of Custodian Guard with Kyria. Some small units of Alaris custodians to teleport round the board and, and get to grips with the targets they can handle best. Some prosecutors or witch seekers to help you score a bit. Maybe some Caladius tanks hovering in the background. 
You might want to shake things up a bit depending on detachment used as well. The Talon slightly wants a little bit more in the way of Sisters of Silence, and you might be a bit more tempted by Shield Captains as well with all the battle tactics on offer. In any case, look forward to hearing what you think. As mentioned, I do feel like Games Workshop haven't done the best job with the launch of the Custodes Codex, to put it mildly. Though fingers crossed they might do some sort of return to the devastating wound protection and any points changes they might deem necessary after a period of evaluation with the Codex performing in events. In any case, until that happens, look forward to hearing your thoughts as to how you might play the army yourselves. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all the content coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.